In this video, we're going to show you how you can use the extrude and weave tool in Aspire. So let's just go to file, close, and then we'll go ahead and open an existing file from the project folder. We're going to open the extrude example. Now what we'll do is we'll just tile our windows. And so to access the extrude and weave tool, you need to go into your design tab and under modeling tools, you want to click on this icon here. And when you open that, that will open up the extrude and weave tool. And we're going to look at a few examples to cover everything that you need to know to get started with this tool. So the extrude tool uses one or more vector drive rails to define the path that the shape will follow, where you can then extrude either a vector cross section or a 3D component along these vectors to create an extruded or woven model. So the first thing you need to do is you need to specify a drive rail. So we're going to start by looking at this vector here. We're going to click on that and then we're going to say use selection. And when you click on that, that will then activate that into a drive rail. And we can see the vector's start point over here indicated by this green node. And we've got arrows that's telling us the direction of this rail. Now, next, what we need to do is specify a cross section and we can use a vector or we could use a component. In this case, just to get us started, let's take a look at this vector here. So we're going to click on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this cross section and that's going to drive along this vector that we've got here. Working our way down the form, we can give that a combine mode to let the software know how we want this component to combine with our components. We can give that a name and then once you're happy, you could just go ahead and press apply. And then we can see the result of that here in our 3D view. And if we just go ahead and twiddle our view, we can see the profile, that semicircle there, is just driving along that vector rail that we had selected. And then this is the result of the shape that we're seeing here. So let's just put that back into the top view. And once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and press close. And then you can take your component and you can move it around if you wanted to. And it's worth noting that it is no longer associated with that vector. And then let's just go up to the top here in our levels. And we're just going to right click and we're just going to delete this component. And then we're going to take a look at another example. So let's just go back into the extrude form. So now we're going to look at the effect of applying more than one cross section. So we're going to select this vector, use that as our drive rail. This time we're going to use this shape here and we're going to click on the start point to apply that there. And then we're going to click on this shape here and we're going to click on the end point over here. Now notice we've got a red square on this cross section and that matches up to this cross section here, the position of that on our drive rail. And we've got a yellow square over here and we can see that's indicated by this yellow point over here at the end of our cross section. And then if we go ahead now and press apply, we can take a look at the result of that there. And so if we just twiddle our view over here, we can see we've got this profile, which is this one here sweep it along and then it blends nicely into this profile which finishes off over here and it's creating a nice sweep between the two vectors there and that's because we've got this option here called sweep between spans and so this crease in the shape actually goes from node to node uh, in the cross sections as the span flows exactly from one to the next now, if we actually undraw this option to sweep between spans, and then if we go ahead and hit apply, then what we can see here is the shape just linearly uh, flows from one cross section to the next evenly. And so you've given quite a lot of choice as to what shapes you can create using those options also. So let's just put that back on sweep between spans and then we'll just go ahead and press apply. Now it's important to note that when you do use the sweep between spans option, all of the cross sections must have the exact same number of spans within them. So if we just reset that, and then if we just close out here, and if we just go into this one over here and press N to node edit this, and then if we go ahead and we just inserted a new point like so, so now we've got one, 
to three spans and our original has one too and we can take a look at the effect of using a different number of spans per cross section and how that affects the uh, span option. So go back into the extrude tool and then we're going to select this as our rail, use selection, apply this one over here and then we're going to apply this one over here and then with that sweep between spans switched on we could go ahead and press apply and you'll see it actually hasn't done it and that's because uh, the two vector cross sections that we've used have a different number of spans and we can see that uh, represented by those numbers here so the when you see these numbers that's what the software is telling us that there are uneven amount of spans between the two cross sections and so it cannot sweep between those spans so we know that this one has three spans and we can see that this vector should also have three spans here. So let's take a look at the effect here of applying this square shape to this portion over here and then this shape remaining on the end over here. And if we go ahead and press apply, we can see the effect of that. So you can see it's starting out with that rectangular shape and then it's just sweeping nicely into that triangular shape. And again, that's thanks to the fact that we are using the same number of spans uh, between each of those cross sections. Now let's take a look at an example where we use three cross sections and we'll look at the right click menu on our drive rail. So I'm just going to reset this. And what we're going to do is we're going to select our circle, apply that over here, and on the end over here and then we're going to take the square boxy cross section and apply that to the center there and then what we could do is we could go ahead and press apply to see the result of that okay so we've got this rounded shape going into that flat uh, rectangular shape and then going back out to the rounded shape at the bottom now on the actual node here on our rail what we could do is we could right click here and then we could look at unsmoothing that and when we unsmooth that and then go ahead and press apply you'll see that we have a crease here so it doesn't do that in a smooth uh, fashion there and so you can see that crease uh, if you wanted that back you could use a smooth option and apply that to bring that back to a nice smooth transition right click here if you wanted to you could delete this cross section so you could delete it and then apply that and then that will reset that for us. So let's just put that back to the top view. So let's just add that cross section back in. So we're just going to click that in place and then we'll just go ahead and press apply. Now we do have the ability to move your cross sections. So for example, we can just drag that node and then go ahead and press apply again and then that will update the shape there like so. We can drag that back over here and then press apply that just really gives us lots of control there. Right, and so let's just go ahead and we'll just delete this cross section and then we'll go ahead and press apply. Now the way that the height is created in our component is all down to the vector that you're actually using to uh, extrude along. And so if we wanted to control that height a little bit better so it's not based on the vector, then we do have this option here to scale to an exact height. And if we check that and set that to one inches, then we can see that that has increased that height to one inch there. And obviously you can change this to whatever value you want it to be. So we're just gonna undraw that and then the software will just update that back to the height of the vector that we're using as the cross section. So let's just put that back in our top view and then we're just going to reset this here and then we're just going to clear our rails as well just to deselect everything. So now we're going to look at two examples where we're going to extrude along a closed shape. So we're going to take a look at this rectangle to begin with. I'm going to say use selection and then I'm going to undraw this option here to create square corners and then we're going to take this profile here and then we'll just go ahead and press apply to see the effect of that. Okay, so you can see that rounded shape is being extruded around here. But if you wanted to have square corners on the external areas here, then you can just simply use this option here to create square corners, press apply, and then that will fix that there for you. Okay, so 
If you want to start a new component, you can use start new component here and then we can select this vector here and then we'll say use selection and then we're just going to take this cross section here and if we go ahead and press apply, we can take a look at the effect of that. Okay, so we can see our shape being extruded around. Now, if, you, if it wasn't quite the right way round in terms of the shorter span being on the inside and you wanted that actually on the outside then you can come over to your rail and you can use the option here to reverse rail and then go ahead and press apply and then that will update that for you there so let's just put that back in the top view and we're just going to reset this and um, we're going to take a look now at the effect of using a component to extrude along our rail so just going to close out here and then we're just going to look at importing a model okay so i've got a model here which is a grape leaf and if we just shrink that down like that i'm just going to take that and we're just going to rotate it like this and then just taking a look in the 3d view you can see it's got a little bit of a tilt on there which is going to be perfect for when we overlap these leaves so we're just going to put that on the top and then we're going to go back into the extrude tool and we're going to use this option here or this rail here and say use selection this time we're going to use the component and then using our drop down we're going to search for our component which is the grape and we can see what that would look like and then what we could do is we could just set our percentage here to just be at 0% and then press apply to see the effect of that and so you can see that our leaf model is just following along the center line of our rail in this sort of pattern, which gives us a nice effect. I'm going to start a new component. This time we're going to look at this vector here and we'll use that as our rail. And we'll again use that same component there, except this time let's just increase the overlap. So the overlap here just means how much of a percentage that we're overlapping each component as it gets to the next one. So for example, if we set that at 19, we could go ahead and press apply. And then we can see the effect of that here. So you can see that the leaf is actually overlapping, whereas over here we had a 0% overlap and so there we've got a clear gap there. So next up, we're going to look at the weave settings. So to help us demonstrate this, we're just going to open up another file. So we're just going to close out here. And then we're going to go and open an existing file and from the project folder, we're just going to open this weave example here. And then we'll just tile our windows. So we're going to go back into the extrude and weave tool. So we're going to go into the tool here and we're going to take a look at weaving these vectors that we've got here using a vector cross section. So in order for us to start the whole process, we need to select our vectors that we want to use for our selection. And then we'll use this option to use selection. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this as our cross section where we're going to look at weaving under and over at crossings. And so what that will mean, if you take a look at this graphic here, you can see that where we have a crossing, it's going to weave one rail over and one rail under. And that's going to give us a really nice weave effect. So at the moment we can do this by scaling the shape or we could add a base. So we're just going to take a look at the effects of scaling the shape whereby we can specify the percentage that we want to have our Z under at. So for example, we could set that to 50% and then the Z over could be 150%. And then we could go ahead and press apply and then take a look at the effect of that. Okay, so we can see We've got the Z over there at 150% and then over here we've got the Z under at 50%. So it's just reducing it or increasing the height of this area at the crossing in order for us to create that woven effect, which looks really good. We just put that back to the top and obviously you can adjust the percentage as much or as little as you wanted and then just go ahead and press apply to see the effect of that. Okay, so that's using the scale shape. So let's just put that back to 50 and we'll put that back to 150 over here and then we'll apply that. And then this time we'll look at the effect of adding a base instead. So we're going to use the add base option. 
Okay, so the software is actually automatically updated that to 70% under and 130% over. So we'll just go with that and we'll go ahead and press apply and we'll take a look. And so what that does is it just adds a base height. So it will create a base height over at 130% and then an under at 70%. And you can see that's looking pretty good. So that's how easy it is to create your weave. So we're actually just going to reset this and then we're just going to close out. And now we're going to take a look at another example. So we're just going to go into our layers. I'm going to look at the circle weave. So we're going to take all of these vectors. So it looks quite complicated at the moment. And then we're going to go back into the extrude and weave tool, use selection. We'll use this cross section here. And then we'll go ahead and press apply to take a look at the effect of what we've got here. And you can see that looks really good. And again, if you think that where you've got profiles that kind of intersect into each other that's because of the the way that that profile is actually set up there and you could look at increasing some of the values in here so for example we could increase that to perhaps 150 press apply to accept that and you can see that that's actually clearing that nicely there okay so that's that so I'll put that back to the top and then we're just going to look at our last example. So we're just going to reset that. And then we're going to go over into our layers bar at the top here. And we're just going to switch on the stretch weave. And we'll just clear the rails. And then we're just going to select these vectors and then use this option here to use selection. You'll see we've got this component down here. Okay, so this is a paintbrush component. And if we use the use component option, going to look at using this option here to stretch drive rail length and then when we go ahead and press apply using those settings that we've got for the weave you can see what happens here is it creates our paint brushes so it looks like they're going over and under each other because we've got that base and if we use the scale option and then press apply we can take a look at the effect of that also which is really handy right and so just put that back into the top View. And that's pretty much how you use the extrude and weave tool. Now it's worth pointing out here that if you are using the clip art, if you go to the clip art tab here, you can see there is a weaves section which has lots of different vector layouts for you to create uh, different sorts of weaves so using your own cross sections. We've also included lots of models as well where we've actually done all of the woven effects for you. And so these are always good to have a look through. And that completes this video. Thank you for watching.